This is the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast, episode 32, with guest Kira Sabin. All resources and links that you hear in this podcast can be found at yourkickasslife forward slash 32. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host. The girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Very excited that Kira Sabin is back on the podcast for episode 32. And let me tell you a little bit about her. Kira is a certified life coach specializing in Gen Y and Gen X singles, troop leader of love for the League of Adventurous Singles, college speaker, HuffPo blogger, story collector, life explorer, seven layers of ridiculous, and your new best friend. She is kind of like your own fairy godmother. Except, instead of unicorns and fairy dust, she rocks life-changing self-knowledge, realistic expectations, and helps you actually figure out what you need to create an amazing relationship and life. You can find out more about Kira at theleagueofadventurousingles.com, and here we go with the podcast. Hey there, ass kickers. We are here on episode 32 of the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast, and you already heard about my amazing friend and colleague, Kira Sabin. So why don't you say hi, Kira? Hey, everybody. <laughs> and this is your second time on the YKAL podcast. You must am... be fancy. Oh my God, I'm so <laughs> fucking fancy. Um, if you saw me right now and how fancy I was, like, you would be blown away. Um, you know, the secrets of a life coach that works out of her house. You know, I've, I've been in pajamas for days. That has a cat named Leroy. I have a cat named Leroy. I'm literally wearing a t-shirt right now that I got in the Bahamas in, like, 1996 when I worked on cruise ships. And it has, I can see four holes just right, <laughs> right now in front of me. From Sexy. That, from that time you got in a fight in the Bahamas with those gang members. No, I think it's because it's 18 years old. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, sometimes we don't look our best when we're – I just had a client and I was Skyping with her. And, and as I – as as the phone is ringing on Skype, like I'm like, oh my god, did I brush my hair today? And so I'm like putting it in a ponytail. And luckily, she's a longtime client; she doesn't care. But I was like, I did brush my teeth. <laughs> Ta da! Fancy, <laughs> fancy as fuck, right here, going on. Yeah, you guys exactly. are are um, getting a little glimpse because Andrea and I are pretty good friends, so you're getting a little glimpse into the world of what we talk about every day, and uh, it's mildly embarrassing at best. <laughs> Well, it's real life. It, it really is. It's real life. But we do, we do, we are kick ass business women, that's for sure. We and are. we absolutely, and we have holes in our shirts sometimes. Sometimes we do. <laughs> yeah. But um, today, you know, Kira is the, the quintessential love expert for, for singles. And that's where uh, I, and I love your, your membership thing. How's that going, by the way? The, the League of Adventurous Singles. It's amazing. It's amazing. Good. I'm, um, I'm so excited about it. It's like all of my life has led me to this point. Mm -hmm. Dramatic yeah, statement. And if you guys are single or – and so tell me, are people that are in relationships, can they join the League of Adventurous Singles? Here's the deal. People who are in relationships are joining. Um, you know, it's got a great name. I work with singles. I kind of <laughs> just join based on that. I aim no, and I aim for working with singles. But what we're really working on here is you, and mm -hmm. and that's and you feeling great and motivated and getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things and kind of just be being the best you possible. And we're doing that partially, you know, so when great love shows up, or if you already have great love in your life, like how to make it even better. Yeah, because or it's if about you, maybe you. Have love in your life that isn't great, and you want to make it better. Absolutely, I would think that's Absolutely. probably a big problem. Yeah, because I don't have any experience being in a relationship. <laughs> that wasn't fantastic. I know. I mean, you pretty much are like Snow White when it comes to that shit, right? You're <laughs> totally. like you like fell into You're your marriage it was beautiful mm -hmm. i mean uh -huh. every absolutely day. every day yeah well and that's a great segue for what we're talking about today and and you graciously came up with this topic being the expert on love and singledom and relationships is the evolved relationship <laughs> Ooh. 
why don't I just hand it over? You can just do the whole podcast for me. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you sit back and relax? I'm going to go get some coffee. I'll be back. And I got it from this point on. So don't do not worry. Um, you know, so the evolved relationship, which I think right now may be the worst name ever that I've come up with because I haven't come up with an official name. It sounds very woo woo. Do- yeah, I know. But the thing is, is like when I explain to you what I mean, like it'd be like, OK, I get why you're calling it that. So I am taking, by the way, um, if anybody wants to submit name ideas for kind of this concept that I work with, uh, please go ahead, uh, throw them on the page comments below. Uh, but the evolved relationship is something I really work on my on clients with. And it comes up a lot, actually, a lot, a lot, you know, uh, on my podcast and in my articles, because here is what I want people to think about. I want you to think about your parents' relationship. And most people are going to be like, I don't really want a relationship like my parents. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Right. Or your grandparents' relationships or your great-grandparents. And we have to start thinking about the idea that, you know, 100 to 120 years ago, like, you got married because you had to for survival, Mm -hmm. like, to basically help, you know, birth children to work in the fields next to your husband. And, you know, it was it, it was not even an option because sometimes your family couldn't, you know, afford to keep you on. So wow. this is not, you know, the 1500s. This is like a hundred and some years ago. It is not that long ago. And I mean, I come, you know, I'm from Wisconsin. This is like pioneer land, man. It was, it was hard living. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when you start thinking about, you know, I, I, I even know stories of my, my grandmother and the way she was raised on the farm and just, I mean, you know, she would work 12 hours a day in the barn. Like, it was it was just a different world. And so it's so amazing to me that we've arrived to this place in 2014. And we are like, I want a best friend and a co-parent <laughs> and somebody who's my rock and can really figure out our finances and can, I mean, and you can finish you know, my sentences. Right, exactly. And, you know, the list can go on and on and on and on. And I'm like, who the fuck told you that shit? Nobody promised you that media kind of like brought uh, that up, you know, Disney movies, but there is nothing in our life that has actually shown that those, ex- that those relationships exist. Mm-hmm. Like our parents didn't have those relationships. You know, my, my parents, I love my parents. They've been married now almost 50 years. It's 50 years next year, which I think is, is outstanding. Their roles are very different than the roles that I would, that I will play in a relationship, you know? And then my grandparents, my grandparents had this most amazing relationship. He was literally the boy down the road. Um, and the thing is, is though, what my grandfather said went, <laughs> like that's mm. the, you know? And, and the thing is, is that why I think they worked really well for the relationship during that time was he didn't never take advantage of that. Like he really appreciated my grandmother and he never took advantage of that. But if it was fight night or boxing night on TV, it was boxing night on TV. You know, it wasn't I love Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> No exceptions. So, I mean, so when I started talking about this evolved relationship, we have these whole new ideals. And the thing is, is I want to tell people that's okay. You know, we aren't worried about our kids dying of rubella anymore. We aren't worried mm-hmm. about, you know, where to get food anymore. Most of us can, you know, raise ourselves, get an apartment, things like that. But you better fucking show up to have that kind of relationship. And you better take care of your shit to have that kind of relationship. You, d- you don't just fall into this beautiful relationship that never has existed in our history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, and it's, it's funny because I realized for myself, you know, obviously in retrospect, that I, I too, like I believed that those relationships, I mean, I'm talking like when I was late teens, early 20s, I believed that that perfect relationship existed. And it was like my life's mission <laughs> to Dun-da-da. change my boyfriend into being my prince charming because clearly like I did not realize even that I had my own shit to work on like I really truly like looking back I thought it was all his fault and it wasn't right. until uh 13 years later and a very messy breakup and divorce did I look in the mirror and go oh <laughs> oh like I chose this. I, I stayed. I created it. <laughs> yes. I accepted it. Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly. Because what what we're doing here is we are <laughs> dating and having relationships with humans, 
not movie characters or television characters. That doesn't messy exist with mm-hmm. messy, messy humans. And I mean, and that stuff is beautiful. But if you have all these crazy ass expectations, you are going to constantly be just let down. Yeah. Well, so tell me, like, what you think the difference is between, like, where is the line drawn between, um, on one side, having lowered expectations? Wasn't that a, like a skit on SNL or something? <laughs> it was, I think, lowered expectations. I'm not sure. I know the tight pants skit on Jimmy Fallon that you and I sing all the time, but I don't know the lowered expectations one. Okay, so what's the difference between like lowered expectations and then being in a place where you are tolerating? crumbs or you're tolerating borderline abuse and things like that? I mean, those are great questions. And let me tell you this, this comes back to you. As I'm sure you work with your clients on this, this comes back to, you know, first of all, when somebody says to me, I'll never settle, I'm like, fuck you. That is like the rudest thing that we're settling for another human being. Mm-hmm. You know, like that is like the rudest thing that anybody could ever say that somebody who doesn't have as nice of a job or a better job than you or somebody who dresses not as great or somebody, you know, all the weird shit that I hear my clients say about why they chose not to date somebody the first two dates. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. How come we don't settle for people who are assholes? <laughs> You know, everybody's like, I'm not settling, which usually means chemistry, P.S., Mm -hmm. instead of like, oh, but I'm totally willing to settle for like abusers, drug addicts and assholes if they're hot. I did that. I know you did. Well, and so here's okay. So here's a question. So it's like, you know, I'm thinking back on on the people where I was like I dated and they were they were great. Um, I'm thinking of this one guy in particular who I think is actually still single, who is gorgeous, like like this guy is like in his early forties, full head of beautiful hair, it which is a big deal now. Let's great. Be I know when you get to be our age, you know it's a big fucking deal. I, just, I yeah, I love great hair, great teeth. You know, he was just he was a beautiful human being on physical appearances only. Um, he had a good job. He had his own house, you know, in in La Jolla, and he even played in a band. You know, he was like so great on paper. And I, I, I was out with him a few times, and he would he would talk badly about like blue collar jobs about guys with blue collar jobs and like I was just like that's just shitty like don't you know like my dad worked a blue collar job and and you know some men that I really care about worked blue collar job I just thought that was shitty and and he and I just like that for me was such a huge red flag and plus oh god this is like really personal when we would be intimate he had this like voice, like his voice would change. And it was my, I told my one friend and she's like, it sounds like Bobby Brady. He had this like, high pitched voice. And I was like, what is happening to you? Wait, what do you Stop. mean? Tell me more. I need, doesn't everybody want to hear? I know you do. You're all nodding in your cars as you listen to tell us more. I what can't is this even about? Rem- I am like, I am like clenching, like my eyes are squeezing. <laughs> I'm trying to remember like what he would say. And I, I cannot say like sex talk, like dirty talk out of context. Like I, I, I have like such a repulsion to it, but he would say things like in this high pitched voice during sex and it would, it would, I would shut down so quickly and I'm like, and we, I was so like, how do I even bring this up? Like, can you not right. talk during sex? Because that is ridiculous. Right. That's what I wanted to say. Anyway, my point is that I stopped dating him pretty much for like those two reasons. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. There is a difference. Okay. So there is a difference between ridiculous, you know, ridiculous slash um, that's one that's one category. Another category is like abusive addict. That's never okay, by the way. Like that's never, True. never okay. Um, so like if somebody says to me, like, I love him, he just has a bit of an alcohol problem. I'm like, here's the deal. You're gonna love him and you're gonna be the only person loving him for a really long time. And don't mm-hmm. even expect that your life is ever going to be a priority. Mm-hmm. Because True. The, dr- the drug is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so that's a whole is. other category. That's a whole other conversation. See, there we go. We keep like having these talks and then we like go, okay, that's the next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing is, is like, but you have to know what you need. This is why you are there, Andrew. This is why I am here. You have to know what you're, what you need and like what actually is okay with you and what isn't okay. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't be the things like he wears white shoes. 
you know? Yeah. But if you, but you know, the thing is, is that the fact that he actually had a different viewpoint on life by putting down blue collar workers when your own family was blue collar mm-hmm. workers, that's a different value point. Yeah. That's big shit. Well, and I think too, like those are two, like those two things that I didn't like about him. I, I owned that I never said anything about it. Like I could have said, he, he might have not even realized he was doing it, both of those things. And I could have had a conversation, a tough conversation and said, Hey, this really bothers me. Is that, is that something that you really feel? Or are you just saying that? Cause if you really feel that way, I think that we should stop seeing each other. And I never said anything about either. So that's on me. That is on you. And I mean, and that's kind of brings up. You know, my other big meaty point that I'm bringing, like my two favorite things to talk about that I talk about with my clients, which is, you know, are you finding love or kind of falling into it or whatever we like to think, you know, soulmate, the one, or are you creating a relationship? Mm -hmm. Because if you are actually going into this, and this is what I work on, you know, the people who are my clients, the people who are my league, all the things, when you are out there actually meeting people, connecting and then from the beginning, creating a relationship, that looks really different. Yeah. And that's like, and, and that's where you don't wake up three years and go, oh, shit, I don't actually know this person and I don't really like them. Yeah. Which happens a lot. Well, and what do you think? Is there like one, because I think I, I know at least of one key ingredient to creating that, you know, quote unquote, evolved relationship that you just mentioned. I mean, it's, you know, it starts, it starts with A, you knowing yourself and like I said, not necessarily what you want, not that damn three page checklist, but what you need to thrive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like what? And I ask, you know, if my clients, I tell them if they're going to do like a checklist or, or some kind of like, you know, what I want, you do it on how you want to wake up feeling every morning. Okay. Yeah. What is, what is, you know, being loved, respected and appreciated in a beautiful relationship feel like to you? Hmm. I'm taking notes. Thank you. <laughs> Good. You're getting the you're getting the good stuff because I well, really and do. you know anyone that's that's followed me for any length of time knows you know the gist of my history. So I was in one relationship for a really long time, my late teens and all through my twenties, uh, where and I was married, and then now I'm in a new marriage. And the, they are vastly different. They're vastly different men. They're vastly different relationships. And I am a completely different person. So it was like, a, like to say it was another lifetime is very true. So what I have noticed the biggest differences is for, you know, and I can only speak for myself really is working on my own shit. And in my previous relationship, I relied on my partner to be my source of everything. You know, like <laughs> it's all the the whole Barry White, like you're my everything. Um, the um, Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Like Ugh. that's that. Go, go throw up because I know you want to. What? Like that is that's what I thought, and a lot of my expectations came from media, and I just thought that I really thought that like he should be a certain way, and I was asking something of him that he simply could not provide me. He just wasn't there yet, Mm -hmm. and he honestly, like, I know that he did the best he could with what he had at that time. We both did, which I believe is true for everyone. Absolutely. You can't be the type of person that you want to be if you don't have the tools to deal with stuff that has happened in your childhood, the stuff that comes at you in your career, the stuff that happens when it comes up with parenting. Like that's why I'm such a big believer in therapy. My God, like (laughs) how do people get through life and not go to therapy? Like that's been a lifesaver for me. Don't even get me started. Go. Don't even get me started. (laughs) No. And you know what? I have an unwritten rule in my head where you get to blame kind of like your parents and stuff for shit till about 30. And then (laughs) that's a cutoff. Yep. That's a cutoff. And then you need to go take care of it. Yeah. Like, you know, like at at that point you are grown up enough to be able to like reach out for help and support on how to break through those things. Right. Because you know what? It's very tiring at 55 if you're dealing with the same shit as you were dealing at 25. Right. Well, and I think it's true for parents too. Like as parents, they did the best they could with what they kept. They, Absolutely. So stop blaming them for, for doing stuff that they couldn't even really help. And, and I Because just, they probably learned it from somewhere too. From, yeah, from their family of origin or their relationships or their own woundings and stuff. So, you know, I, I it's all, you know, now that I'm 39, like it's all kind of making sense 
to me, and it has been for years, like why my dad is the way he is, why my mom is the way she is, why they were that way in their own marriage, which which didn't end up working out after 22 years of marriage. So it's like, I, I am like, ah, oh, now I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, I, I really encourage, like I just started having bigger conversations with, especially my dad, who was kind of like the tough nut to crack um, about, you know, about his past and his childhood and like just even asking, you know, questions and the things I found out, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I didn't know any of that. I mean, it's amazing. He turned out as normal as he did, mm-hmm. which by the way is not that normal. So, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, but at least not fucked up. I mean, like it's, it's kind of incredible because, you know, he, he's even still from the generation of children are, are seen, not heard, yeah. you know, when, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and so, and that's just not that long ago. That's just not that long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. When the other the other ingredient, you know, my my first one I think is is go fix your shit as best you can and communication. Like I know Absolutely. it's I know it's like one of those cliché like yeah, yeah, yeah. But um I, you know, in my current marriage, I sort of I started to make up where it was like I don't want to be I got tired of being like the um the one who always kind of brought stuff up that that needed to be taken care of. And I finally was like, Andrea, just stop it. Like it's really, that's my role. And I, I kind of think that we all sort of fall into roles in relationships and I'm, I'm really okay with it now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can't expect my husband to just suddenly totally change the way he is. Like when we do have conversations, they are always, they always have an outcome that is beneficial to our relationship, but I'm typically the one that starts them and I'm really okay with that. It's not like he like sits on the couch all day long and I do all the tour. You know what I mean? Like that would right, be shitty. Right. But it's like, okay, I, I, again, so I guess that's like where I kind of lowered my expectation. And I'm like, okay, also this is something I'm just really good at. Like I'm good at starting conversations. I'm good at communication. It's what I do for a living for Christ's sake. So who am I to sit here and be like, no, I want you to start the conversation. <laughs> I'm tired of doing it all the time. You know, like that's kind of the place that I got to finally where I'm like, okay, cool. Cause I'm a choice really. If I want to be mad at him or not about it, I would really, I would really pick other battles. You know, and I think that that's really, that's really interesting because everybody's going to be bringing different things to the relationship. You don't want to date your, you know, just the, the male or female version of yourself. Um, and, and I think it's really important to know like what you're bringing so you can both set each other for, up for success. You know, and it's kind of, I remember like, I remember being in like the movie line not too long ago and the person I was with knew the person in front of us and they were talking. She's like, I'm just really mad at my husband right now. And, you know, and, you know, so, and the woman I'm with is actually a therapist because that's what life coaches do. They hang out with life coaches and therapists. But, um, and, you know, and she's like, oh, well, that's too bad. And then she kind of like unleashed for about one minute about how she was mad at him, but she wasn't going to tell him why she was mad at him. Right. Like he needed to figure it out. And read her mind. And, and exactly. And, and read her mind, which I have an article about men are not mind readers. And I was just like dude, they're fucked. They're fucked for so long until she stops playing that game, mm-hmm. you know? Because the thing is, is like, if he knew how to read her mind, he'd be doing it. <laughs> right. It'd be so you much know, easier. just to like make his life more simple, let alone because he married her and he probably wants her to be happy. Yeah. You for know, sure. and I'm just kind of like, and I, I'm just like, well, you know, have you talked? No, he just needs to figure it out. And I'm just like, wow. wow. You know, like you, and that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's your shit and that's on you. We are crazy. That's not on the, that's, I mean, (laughs) don't get me started. Don't even get me started. I mean, the thing is, is like, it's so amazing that there's all these like nonviolent communication, like all of these different techniques out there. And I'm like, um, why don't you take care of your shit so that you don't get offended by everything that your husband or boyfriend says? Mm -hmm. Why don't you do that instead? Knowing that they love you, knowing that here is the big Another big concept, they are choosing to be with you because we don't have to be with people anymore. Right. <laughs> Once again, like I talk, the evolved relationship. I you don't know, need you uh, to work on my farm. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we don't need to like birth children. Turns out we have like 8 billion people. We're good. You know what I mean? Like, so they don't have to be there. So you better ha- figure out how to work with them to make sure that you both want to be there. Because now as we're looking with the, with the divorce rate over 50%, like people are leaving. Yeah, because people aren't taking the time to to do that communication, to taking care of that own shit, to create these relationships. And then they just are like disappointed and uh oh, love let them down. Nope, you let yourself down. Hmm. 
You know, it, I, I love that. I, it's another thing that I just thought of that has been vastly different in the way that I act <clears throat> in this relationship versus my former one. And um, I was being interviewed for another podcast a couple months ago, and and I, I don't know how this came up. It was a, it was a business interview, but it, relationships came up. But uh, what's different is, so I'll give you an example. So my husband and I were having, you know, a come to Jesus talk, and, <laughs> I, and I think... I think I had brought something to him to that I was upset with, and um, my husband waits uh, like he'll have something that's bothering him, and he'll wait until which usually isn't very long because we have these conversations like every two to three weeks, and he'll wait until I bring something to him, and then so it's like the you know the tables are even, mm -hmm. and so he'll throw something at me, and um, so he did, and. He, he said something that stung, you know, that I was doing, that he was upset with. And the old me would have done a few things. I would have immediately gotten defensive. I would have immediately justified my wrong behavior. And I was, I had gotten really good at turning it around and making it his fault that I behaved that way. Like if you would have acted differently, I would have, I was a master at that. We both were, we both were actually. And it was just... We so took advantage of, of of our power over each other. It was it was scary how we that had shit is mastered. exhausting. It oh god, I was tired. So anyway, so in this relationship, so that happened. Like he he told me something that I was doing, the way I was behaving, that was upsetting him, and I paused. You know because it, it hurts. You're like oh. Uh, you know, I just got served basically. Right. <laughs> he drops the right. mic, you know, and it's quiet. He's all standing there with his arms open. Um, and I was like, you're right. I have been doing that and I'm sorry. And it's like, there's that moment of like stunned silence from both of us because <laughs> it's like, wow, you might not have to argue and not right. that you do, but it's like that to me, it's humbling for sure. And it's like not easy and it's getting easier to do it, but it benefits everyone just owning your stuff. And cause like sometimes stuff will come at me and I don't even realize that I'm doing it. And, uh, other times in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh yeah. Cause it's like kind of been bubbling up. Like I should probably not do that. Cause this doesn't feel good. Either way, owning your shit, I think, is is such a gift that you can give your partner and yourself. It's like the gift that keeps on fucking giving, it, man. It is. But, and let me tell you, like, I'm amazed by the amount of people in relationships and even married who are not really all in. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Who are who have not actually made that conscious effort or that conscious conversation with their spouse, and they're waiting for the other shoe to drop at any given time. And I mean, there's just a point where while you're dating and this is the, this is the, you know, creating a relationship where you just have to say, you know what? I like you enough or I care about you enough or I love you enough that when you say something that, you know, kind of hits me, I'm going to know that you don't actually mean it because you would never want to hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. You know? And I mean, just, just stuff like that, that I feel like, as you know, people in relationships, they're kind of just watching the other person waiting for them to either like figure them out good or bad, or, you know, to walk. I mean, there's just a point where like the people I know who are having amazing relationships have like had those tough conversations and are just like, we're doing this. We are fucking doing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had an amazing conversation with our friend Kate um, for my league. And she was just like, you know, we went through, you know, one of the things that Andy and I really have in common is the fact that we ultimately said when we have problems, we'll instantly go to therapy. Mm -hmm. We made that a value in our relationship and that is what saved us. Yeah. I know people that go, you know, for tune ups every once in a while, like, you know, it's not a constant thing, but I, I, my advice is like, you have to stick it out for a certain amount of sessions. And, uh, if you oh, find definitely. a therapist that sucks, then go for it. There's so many. There's a plethora <laughs> out there to, to, uh, to help you. And I, I, it, it helped us so much. Like I can't even tell you. <laughs> so helpful. What do you say to, what do you, would you say to people who, cause I have a theory about this. So, so who is married to someone and I, my guess is that it's usually a man who refuses to go to therapy. Well, I don't want to make that assumption, first of all, that it's, it's always a man, because let me tell you, I would say I, 
I have a whole new belief on men because I coach women and men and the men I have as clients are sensitive and sweet and vulnerable and amazing. And, and I mean, so that the men that come to you, though, are in a place of where they do value personal development and growth. And I think it's not that I mean, would you, I think it's fair to say any guy that is not interested in therapy, it's not that they don't value that. It's just that it's not OK in our society to ask for help. True. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's not that they don't want to be better. It's not that they don't even want to be better for their marriage. It's just that most of them have never experienced that in their life. We talk to each other every day. We have this built-in support system as women. Men don't have that. Kiss your boyfriend or husband instantly when you see them because they're going through shit every day. Mm-hmm. And and you know, and if you think they're sometimes needy or lean on you too much or whatever, it's because in some lots of relationships you're the only one who really takes the time to get them, to ask them about their day. I mean, if you think about if all you have to do is go to like a place where guys are hanging out and you see the way they interact. Oh my God. You know, they talk about sports because it's the only thing that's not, you know, that's manly enough to talk about. It's, Mm -hmm. I I mean, I can't even imagine the day to day day that's on a lot of guys' shoulders, you know, the the built in competition, the built in, you know, like I, I, masculinity. Absolutely. And if they don't, then they're mocked by, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone. Yeah. And, you know, and in fact, I even have women who are like, I just need him to man up. And I'm like, stop saying that shit. Yeah. That's just mean. (laughs) You know, that's just like, you're just helping build that, you know, you have to be ultra masculine all the time part of our society that we don't ultimately want them to be. Right. You know, you can't have both. Yeah, I yeah, I, I do. That again is a whole another podcast like what our yep. culture is is encouraging from a young age, little boys. So, yeah, I could see why So, what would what would be your advice to try to get somebody, you know, someone who's listening is might be in that position of like I do think that my relationship isn't a place where we need therapy, but my partner won't go. Like what are some good tips to to kind of ease them into it? First of all, start working on yourself. Yeah. Start there. Go to therapy because- by yourself. Yeah, go to therapy by yourself, work with Andrea, or I, like, go to a life coach. I mean, you're going to know kind of where you're at on the spectrum, you know, um, and, you know, start there because you might actually walk away going, oh, a lot of the shit was on me. Mm-hmm. You might actually do that. Mm-hmm. And here's the deal. Like, I'm a huge believer in, you know, people do, don't, you can scream to do something to make you happy 300 times. And then if you're happy then people go, wait, I want that. Yeah. So let Mm -hmm. me tell you, like, if your husband or boyfriend starts seeing you happier and kinder and sweeter and more wonderful in your marriage, they may go, I want to do that too. Yeah. For you, for myself, for our family, for whatever. So, I mean, you know, start with you and go from there. And, you know, and you can tailor how you fight, how you listen, how you communicate and learn strategies and how to do it better. And that alone is going to change your marriage. Mhm. Yeah, one of the things that I that I've adopted that works really well is because and I I'm, I'm assuming this is pretty common in relationships when we find ourselves arguing about the same thing and you go in circles and it's like it's like groundhog day where you're like I I know that we've had this exact same argument, you know, 12 times just this year. So, what I started doing and I know this is very coach like of me, but it, anyone can do it. It's just a simple question. Uh, is say, how, how can we fix this? Like what, what is the solution? Cause you're focusing on the problem right. and many times, not the solution. And I, I think too, sometimes is that you kind of both are butting heads because the solutions don't match up. So ask how you can compromise, like either of you, like, what are you willing to do? How are you willing to compromise? Can you both, can you both get what you want at different times? Um, and then see if that works. Right. And I mean, and really step back and think about your end goal. Right. Because if your end goal is to win or be right, you don't have a great end goal. Mm -hmm. If it's to like make your marriage or relationship stronger and get through it, then I mean, you know, one of the things that I talk to people about is when you bring up something you don't like, you know, you say, how can I support you in this? Mm -hmm. You know what? We don't, we don't ever ask, we don't ever bring it back on ourselves. That's hilarious. Cause we're like, you're doing this. I hate it. You know, it's just like, I noticed you're doing this. I don't think it's working. You know, I don't, I don't feel like it's healthy for our relationship. Is there any way I can support you? Mm -hmm. You know, is there anything that I can do different? Like bring yourself to it. That's what I, I do that too. I say that a lot. Like, is there anything 
I can do differently that and sometimes my husband's just kind of like stumped you know uh, <laughs> and he's like I don't know I gotta think about that so he's just not expecting it right and then you know what he may come back to you and say blah 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 blah, which is like the most simple solution that you never even thought about right. and you just you know changed up your relationship and you're leading by example too so most likely that will be reciprocated one way or another Absolutely. So that, I mean, you know, isn't that a better pattern to get into instead of nagging or picking or whatever the, right. the pattern of, I love you. I want this relationship. So how can I be support you? Mm-hmm. How can I be great for you? How can I like help us get to this next place so that we are, you know, feeling, cause as you know, like uh, great relationships are beautiful. They are amazing. They make you thrive. They help you thrive. They, you know, their support and respect and appreciation. I would say a good majority of people are not having those relationships. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I'll tell you what. I, it, it is. <laughs> and I mean, you know, it's really it's funny. Totally like it. my clients who are single who are coming to me a lot of times, you know, it's to have a long-term relationship. And the first question I ask is why? Mm-hmm. And they're like, uh, I mean, and a lot of times they can't answer or they give me like a very Oprah-fied answer. And I'm like, because here's the deal, because, you know, and a lot of times they answer things like, I just think my life would be better or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nope, <laughs> it's going to get harder. Yeah. You're going to like see things about yourself that you never thought existed that are not pretty. Like when you're doing this, like really doing it, you know, it is slightly scary. It is out of your comfort zone. It is all of these different things. And is it worth it? Absolutely. Yeah. But if it's to like save your life or, you know, because you're lonely, bullshit. That's Mm -hmm. fear. That's that's not bringing you love. It is not. It is not. Well, my gosh, that time went by fast. I thank you so much. And but we have one more thing to talk about. Yes. And that is tanning tacos and transformation. (laughs) That's the way I literally say it. Every time I tell somebody, like, hallelujah, transformation. You can't come out of your mouth without singing it. Yeah. I well, can't. and if you guys don't know yet, Kira, myself, and another colleague of ours, Amy Smith, are hosting the, the we're calling it the Triple T Cruise. And you can find all the information at triple T Cruise.com. And it's a five day Mexico cruise. It leaves out of Miami, right? Actually, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Mm-hmm. Same thing to me. I've never been to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> They're close, but you probably – and actually, it's uh, usually easier and cheaper to fly into Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Things I Know by Kira Saban. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just know that the Golden Girls lived in Miami, so <laughs> uh, and I want to go see them. <laughs> I feel like we should have a Golden Girls event on the ship. Well, it's going to be – it's it's exactly what it's called, Tanning Tacos and Transformation. There will be tanning, there will be tacos, and there will be transformation. So there will be two days, uh, which are called sea days. And you guys, I've never been on a cruise before. This is going to be my very first cruise, and I'm going to be like that little kid at Disneyland, very excited. But they're called sea days when you're actually like on the boat during the day. Sailing, you sound very professional right now, by the way. Sailing so the ocean Keep going. Seas. Keep going. I try. I try. Uh, <laughs> But that's where the transformation is going to take place. We're going to have um, some some group coaching going on, some presenting by the three of us. There will probably be some skits and some ridiculousness involving um, sombreros. What else, Kira? Costumes will be a definite at different points. I mean, here's the deal. If you follow myself or Andrea or Amy, the Joy Junkie, um, we are a shit ton of fun, first of all. We're, We're kind of ridiculous and we're bringing it. So you know that if you spend time with us and these and also the amazing community that's going to be there, like you are going to walk away a better person. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that you're going to have a lot of fun in the process. You know, I said that, you know, for my coaching, I do my coaching a little different. Like I'm changing the world through swearing and scavenger hunts. That's my new, <laughs> that's my new thing. I do a lot of, I do a lot of fun stuff. So there's going to be like activities, there's going to be adventures and, you know, and it's just going to be really Fun. And the thing is, is that even though Andrea has never been on a cruise, I worked on cruise ships for five years. So um, there will be, you know, we're not the blind leading the blind. So that's, that's, that's good. good. But it is just going to be so two days at sea where we're going to have sessions and workshops and just fun shit for you. And you're going to get some downtime that you probably really, really need. And you can eat all day, every day. Um, you can have a pina colada by the pool if that's your thing. Um, and then the two days are in Mexico. You can go to the beach. You can take a tour. You can do whatever you freaking want. I'm and then we're go ATVing in the jungle. 
I know. Oh, yeah. You've been talking about this, me. like, since the minute we, like, looked at it. Like, Who it's coming I, with me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to go ATV in the jungle. Uh, we are going to There's a just... boxing ring on the boat, and I, I will box anyone well, that may, unless you're six feet tall and have huge muscles. <laughs> Then you're out. Uh, no, and, and we should mention we're going to be on Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas, which is one of their beautiful, amazing, you can't believe all the shit they have ship. And I mean, there's ice skating rink. There are, you know, there's I think like, there's um, a disco wave fever. machine. Isn't there like a disco fever show or something? Yes. Saturday night. There fever. is. Mm-hmm. There absolutely is. So the thing is, is like, you know, besides just hanging out with us, there's tons and tons of things to do on a cruise. You just get to do it with us mm-hmm. and it's going to be fun. And you get to do it with all of these other incredible women who are going to be coming along. I am like, I, my heart's beating fast just hearing you talk about it. I know. I'm so excited. Well, and it's interesting because it's interesting because I've wanted, I mean, it's been years that I've actually wanted to go on some kind of retreat like this as a participant because I have a huge value around community and like-minded women. And I love meeting new women, you know, as well as going with friends, but I haven't really found one that suited me because a lot of them are, um, you know, just like kind of really like deep deep, deep, you know, spiritual transformational work. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to, if I'm really ready for that. And so when we created this cruise, I, we all were in agreement that we wanted it to have a huge element of fun because I know for a lot of my clients, they haven't had a lot of fun in a long time. And I think it's something we, we lose when we get into our thirties and forties and we have jobs and kids and all this other stuff. And like, I, I would love to go, and not that we can do this on the cruise, but like, I would love to go toilet paper somebody's house. I want to <laughs> go like in the middle of the night and like, you know, take pictures with a Jack in the box, like topless or something like ridiculous that all these things I used to do in, in high school and in my twenties that were socially acceptable that aren't so much now that I'm 39, but <laughs> You know what, though? The thing is, is like, if you join my league of adventure singles, they are, because that's exactly what's based on fun challenges, scavenger hunts, all that stuff. And I'm going to be bringing some of it, you know, Mm -hmm. to the cruise, like kind of some of the more fun and ridiculous stuff. And I mean, we could even work with the cruise ship about having our own like water games and and things like that. So there's so much that we're going to be doing. And really, we just want to create this like incredible environment for women to come relax, meet each other, like hang out with us, learn something through some smart talk. And just, you know, we all need this. Mm -hmm. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of my world is camp. I grew up in, I grew up in a small town. I went to camp every year and that was my life changing experience to being able to be surrounded by people who didn't know me or, you know, automatically assume things about me. And, you know, I have been trying to create a similar experience where people get to come and reinvent themselves, you know, all the time. This will be my third I've done a retreat now in Costa Rica and I'm doing one in Italy in August. And, you know, this would be my third thing. And, and I just could not be more excited. Triple T cruise.com. And the link will be at your kick ass life forward slash 32. And you can get all the links to Kira's site and learn more about her. And of course the link to, to our cruise, triple T cruise.com. And one more time, it's tanning tacos and transformation. transformation. <laughs> Oh my God. And just wait till you guys see us in our sombrero headbands. I mean, that's just, you know, I'm sure there'll be unicorn things. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be ridiculous, but it is going to be amazing. And we are creating something that is also because it's our first time reasonably affordable, I think. Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, again, go read more at triple T cruise.com to sign up. And that price will not be the same as the year goes on. Right. So, um, I just, I don't know if there's anyone else out there that I don't think there's anyone else out there that's doing it. And if there is, we should probably talk to them so we can all partner. But I, I think that, um, it's kind of one of a kind. I know it is. <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it here first on the Your Kick Ass Life podcast. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. All right. Well, we got to say goodbye. Stay tuned next time, y'all, for episode 33. Uh, I believe it's with Michelle Ward. Very excited to send that out to you. And again, if you want any of the information that you heard here on this podcast, Your Kick Ass Life forward slash three, two. And with that, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.